The slime mold, it's a sort of um, gelatinous blob. It's a single cell, but it doesn't have neurons, it doesn't have a brain. And yet, if you put it in an environment in which there is a complex decision to make, for instance, which direction should you choose to find the best food source? Well, this blob is capable of uh, solving this problem relatively easily. And this thing is just literally a jelly making smart decisions. And the question is, how is something that doesn't have a brain is capable of solving this everyday problem that is absolutely crucial for its survival? <laughs> how can you not be fascinated by this? We set up a series of time-lapse shots. We use time-lapse to study slime molds because slime mold moves very slowly. The experiments last for 24 to 48 hours to be able to just see them move a few centimeters. So we use time-lapse and make the behavior of the slime mold match our own time scale. So when the slime mold is hungry, it's gonna send out of this main biomass little fingers that are going to explore the environment. But we're trying to figure out how do the different part of the slime mold decide as a sort of collective, it's time to move to the right or it's time to move to the left. The different part of the slime mold are going to actually talk to each other. If you take a time lapse of a slime mold, you are going to observe that the membrane of the slime mold is actually oscillating about every minute, inflating and then deflating. Just like we have uh, muscles in our body that can cause physical contractions, the slime mold has a cytoskeleton and motor proteins that cause these contractions. This pumping mechanism is going to actually trigger the neighboring areas of the slime mold to pump harder. And it's how the slime mold grows into the direction of the favorable environment. This physical mechanism is what we believe the slime mold is using in order to make its decision. So we design an experiment where we want to try to trick the slime mold to start pumping harder. We're going to set it for one hour for the experiment. We have invented this little machine that essentially poking the membrane of the slime mold regularly. We have a little flexible bar that we can put in contact with the tubule of the slime mold. By doing this, we're simulating a section of the membrane starting to oscillate faster. Basically, what we would like to be able to do is influence the slime mold's choices, if you will, with this physical manipulation. The hypothesis of this experiment is that it's a physical rather than chemical signal that is transmitted along the axis of the slime mold. We have to replicate these experiments hundreds of times. So it should be about a year before we can start processing all the data. If we didn't have time-lapse, we'd miss the entire process that allowed the slime mold to make a decision. As we learn more about the way information is transferred inside the slime mold, we're going to be able to ask a bigger question about the origin of intelligence on Earth. Where is the intelligence encoded inside this organism? And one of the possible explanations is that the intelligence is encoded into the physical mechanisms that the slime mold uses to move in space. When life emerged and before anything was capable of communicating and perceiving anything, there was just physics. Decision making doesn't necessarily need complex communication mechanism. Often just uh, physics is enough. I think what it makes you realize is that uh, maybe intelligence is not that difficult or maybe we should redefine what we mean by intelligence. <laughs> <laughs>